Canadian model and the Canadian knowledge I know is, is, is vast. I know it's vast and I know that it takes a long, long time to read even a small part of it. I'm sorry for that. I know it's a lot there, but it, it is designed not simply to find temporary relief, but it is designed as a complete and comprehensive model to consume the existing corrupt kingdom of ideas. That's really all that underpins their system, is a kingdom of ideas. And why are ideas so powerful? Because as the ancients in Samaria, as the ancients in Greeks, like Plato, knew, as the ancients of the indigenous people knew, life is indeed a dream. Life is a dream. But a dream that has rules. And whilst we perceive the world, and as we perceive the world, that world is true, perception is everything, perception is reality, there is the collective perception, the unique collective awareness, the collective dream that we live. We don't have to live in prisons, in prison homes. We choose to. We're born into that. We accept that. And so we accept homes today that are like boxes, even though homes in the past in Rome, for example, had open courtyards for the reasonably well-off, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't have the same sort of designs that we had today. We accept the world we live in. Cars have only been round for less than a century, and certainly in terms of major development, the concept of private motor cars for everybody is a relatively new idea of civilization. yet it is ubiquitous, and we, we think nothing that uh, we will drive 20, 30 miles to work. Whereas communities were built on the concept that one lived in a community, one worked within a community, one would walk back home for, for lunch, the older ones would take care of the children. And whilst it may not have been the material wealth that we see today, the quality of life certainly was very, very strong for communities. And those communities existed for hundreds of years. So ideas really are, are essential for building blocks. And if, if ideas and mind is what the world is that we live in and the universe is that we live in, and you cater, if, you, if you just read the covenant one heaven, you'll see that we actually repeat that in the covenant. We actually, the covenant explains, the covenant and the canons, the natural laws. If you just take time and read the canons of natural law, you'll see a complete model that describes why the universe is a dream and the connection between the metaphysical and the physical. And these are not new ideas. These ideas existed thousands of years before Einstein and before other, other inventors and, and, and other theorists. But if, if the world is ideas, then prayer, vocal intent on the perception of reality, on the perception of the dream, of the intervention of awareness into a dream of awareness is enormously powerful. Extremely powerful. If we just get a handle on how to utilize it, when to utilize it, how to focus it, and of course to get into regular habit. Well, before we talk about how prayer works and, and really what is the essential elements of prayer, I'll just share, and I hope you, you don't mind, but I'm, I'm going to recite a prayer that I speak every night before I go to bed as a personal prayer. This is my personal prayer, and it may not seem overly fancy, it might have some odd bits to it, but I'm, I'm going to share for the first time the prayer that I say. So it's not overly long, it's got a little bit of length to it, so let me start. This is what I pray every night. Guardians, Mother, Father, Oliver, AC, Celtic, and all the fairy angels. Katie, Mrs. Bailey, Augustus, Blondie, Kissy, Hazel, Barbara, Steffi, Ellie, Philippa, William, Zach, Megan, Georgia, Dorothy, 
Gerald. I pray for all those that have died today and in pain and all of those that will die tomorrow. For all those that die today or die tomorrow, let none of them die without an angel present. Let none fall into a ghost state or a hell state. I pray to the gods of heaven that they honour the covenant of one heaven. I pray to the angels, saints and demons that they honour the covenant of one heaven. I pray for the earth, the sun, the moon, the solar system, the galaxy and all life in the galaxy and the universe in the absolute. Because I am the absolute and I am more and I am a man. And that's, that's my prayer. That's my simple prayer. Uh, I don't know if I've said it word for word exactly, but from memory that's pretty much what I'm saying every, every night. So it's very simple and I go through um, the names of my immediate family. I go through uh, the Cocker Spaniels that uh, are our children. Uh, I pray for my partner and I talk about the world in general. I, I may miss people out and sometimes I'll add people in and I'll, I'll add people in here in pain and, and talk about that. But it, it's just a very, very simple thing. It's the acknowledgement of their existence. It's acknowledgement that they're there, that we're thinking of them. Now in that I don't I don't ask for money, I don't ask for forgiveness, I don't pray for happy weather. And I could. And let's talk about now the, the mechanics of prayer and this issue of praying for yourself and praying for others. Before we get into this, because we're going to go through different types of prayers, I would like you, if you can, to go and have a look at one-heaven.org. That's one-heaven.org. And when you get to the site, click on the image, go to the home page, and on the right-hand side you'll see prayers by issue type. Because we're going to go through some of these um, in a moment. But the first thing about prayer that people uh, get confused on or not quite sure about is this thing of why can't you pray for things for your benefit? Why does that seem to be less effective compared to general prayers? And, I, and the answer I give to that is as our perception is reality and as prayer is is an invocation, an attempt to change the reality that we live in. When we project it out to others, we are performing the role as an observer, pure observer, because I'm not living your life. Your life is your life. But when you call for yourself, in a sense, your call remains within the universal sphere of reality that is the reality as you see it. So in a sense, it's a bit like saying, I've written a letter, but I've never actually posted it. And that's the problem of self-prayer. It's not that asking for a million dollars or asking for a home, hey, we need to move where I am. And it's causing enormous stress in, in my uh, relationship for the fact that they're demolishing this home and that I have to uproot and and move, and we, we will move, we'll find a place. So praying for a, a, a suitable home for, for my family is something that I, I will be adding into my prayer. But the difficulty is, is being able to look above that. So I, I do believe that the simple answer to the question of why does self-prayer versus prayer for others seem to work or not work is simply that when we pray for others, we are praying in the role of the observer the dreamer, the ultimate dreamer, the divine creator, the unique collective awareness, rather than when we pray for ourselves, the message, in a sense, being trapped within our own universe and the message never getting out. So that's the only thing I really believe is the difference. There's no morality from everything I've read, reflected, prayed. 
design considered over my life that diminishes that. What are other some of the issues of, of, of prayer? Well, the other key thing of the issue of prayer is, is the simplicity of prayer. And recognising that when we pray, we're sending a communication out into layers of awareness, but to keep it simple, but also for the intent of that prayer to be very clear. The most positive prayers are those prayers of affirmation. If I pray pray for ill against someone, I am really um, being negative, and, and negative prayers work. I mean, spells work. When we talk about the Roman cult, the reason the Roman cult has been in power for so long is that they've created some unbelievable spells, horrific spells. We spoke about the spell the last two weeks when we spoke about baptism, baptismo, and the fact that Bar, Apto, um, Ismo, Moloch, is, is effectively Latin for preparing the soul to Moloch, that they actually created a ceremony in front of our eyes, in our hospitals, in dedicating our souls souls to Satan. I mean, as twisted and as mental as that is, that is, that is shows the extent to which these people understand the power of spells. And spells, when look, television is a classic example. And I'm guilty of this. If there's a program I like, I literally become spellbound in front of a television. It's an incredibly addictive device. And Katie will remind me I've got to fix something up, or I've got to do something, and yet I'll be fixated on the program and I will not hear a single word she says. I'm spellbound. So negative spells absolutely work. But it is not the intent and it's certainly not something that Eucadia supports or condones at all in the promotion of negative prayer, negative spells. Rather, we see the power, and it is a greater power, in the positive of prayer in the affirmation, in the intent of positive. So thinking of others, positive and simple prayer seems to be the simplest rules for praying. And of course, there's one more, and that is to pray regularly. Well, I'm going to share with you a couple of prayers that uh, are designed for uh, for a couple of people who are on the call. And they're just simple prayers as examples of how to approach a life of prayer. And, and why is a life of prayer an important aspect in this world? A life of prayer can help quieten the mind, can help drain that fear from us, can help bring us back to a perspective can give us a, a context. For example, when people are absolutely frustrated at this moment and, and feel that they've lost hope that Eucadia really can achieve anything, they forget that the existing system has had hundreds and hundreds of years to perfect its control. Hundreds of years. We have only begun to respond in days, weeks and months. So perspective is something that we can lose just simply because we're fighting to survive. We're fighting to protect our family. We're fighting for our job, our home, whatever is under attack. It is easy to lose perspective. So prayer helps us keep grounded. Prayer also reminds us that we're connected to something greater. We are divine immortal spirits. We are immortal. We need to know who and what we are. We need to read. We need to read and not presume and, and not be lazy about it or defer it or say, I know, just pop it off. I know this. I've read it. I know it. No. We need to remind ourselves that it's, life is a learning journey. Life is a journey. And everyone has a unique contribution to make. But in that, Every day, we also need to remember in our prayer and using prayer that we're connected to something larger. 
And so when we pray,